let's talk about the Yamaha Stage Pass 600BT in comparison with the Yamaha DBR10. Now, I have owned both of these. I did sell my DBRs and I kept the Stage Pass. I did not do a direct side by side comparison. Um, and the only reason I'm making this comparison video now is because I did get a, a question on my DBR10 video asking what I thought the audio quality differences were between the Stage Pass 600 BT and the Yamaha DBR10. So um, these are my thoughts, but like I said, I, I haven't done just like a side by side, listen to one, listen to the other, crank it up, listen to one, listen to the other. Um, so this is kind of going off of memory because I originally bought the Stage Pass 600 BT and I liked it. I thought it was good for a little 10 inch system. Um, surprisingly full sounding. Um, just overall for the price point and what you get, I thought it was a good value for the money. And then I thought, well, since I like the Stage Pass, the DBR10 must be the same thing. I assumed just, uh, I assumed it was essentially a clone, but without like the mixer combo thing. I didn't look into it. I just bought it assuming that. And I used it at a gig with two, I used my, my DBR10s over two Yamaha DXS12 Mark II subs, because I thought this will be my kind of small wedding, small school dance system, you know, have a couple 12 inch subs, it's gonna sound better than just going out with two 12 inch tops. But what I found was when I pushed the volume I thought the DBR10 started to sound a little harsh, um, started to get a little thin sounding, and just didn't quite have the audio quality that I was looking for, you know, that maybe my DAS Audio Action 12As had just because of the components were a little, little more high end in the Action 12A cabinets as compared to a DBR cabinet. You know, I'd say they're definitely two different levels of speaker. So even though I didn't directly compare, I did think the Stage Pass 600 BT sounded better. And I don't know if it's if I think it sounded better because, you know, it's got the flexibility of the contour knob. Um, you know, maybe the drivers are better. I did look up to see right before I made this video. I tried to find the replacement drivers for the DBR10 and the Stage Pass 600 BT. I could only find the replacement drivers for the Stage Pass 600i, which is the discontinued version. I see the specs are the same between the i and the BT, so I'm assuming they just added Bluetooth, that they didn't put different drivers in it. That's, that's my assumption, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And what I found out was, at least through my distributor, the, the 10 inch driver for the Stage Pass 600 BT is about $20 more than the replacement driver for the DBR10. Now, is it basically the same driver? Do they just not sell as many so the price is more? Or is it higher quality so the price is more? Usually I figure if you're paying extra for a replacement driver, the quality must be a little bit better. Um, but I don't know, it, it could be same speaker, different different model number, just so they can charge a little bit more for it. I have no idea. Um, I do know the boxes are tuned differently for sure because the crossover point between the compression driver and the 10 inch driver are different in, in the cabinets. So it might just be that they're tuned differently. Um, I kind of feel like the DBR10 overall tuning just might be a little bit more geared towards use with a subwoofer whereas the stage pass 600 bt i just now mind you this has been years since i you know used both of them together i mean i used the stage pass just recently but the the dbr 10s it's been a few years since i've used them but i thought the db or the stage pass was a little bit fuller sounding like maybe it was a little bit more designed to be used without subs, even though it does have a sub out. Um, I just felt like it maybe sounded a little bit better, tuned a little bit differently. Um, overall, personally, I liked it a little bit better. But 
I don't think the difference is big enough for you to say, well, the stage pass sounds better, so I'm gonna buy that instead. I think you have to look at your use. What are you planning on doing with it? If you have a DJ controller with two XLR outs and you don't need any extra mic inputs, you know, you don't need an aux in or, you know, RCA's headphone jack, Bluetooth, you don't need any of that. You're just going straight DJ controller to speakers. I'd go with the DBR10s because I feel like it fits that setup a little bit better. Now, if you're going to use these as like kind of like little versatile um, speaker system where, you know, I might want to plug three mics into it. Maybe I'm going to have a karaoke night. Maybe um, I'm going to try to get hired for random speaking things. I, you know, maybe I want to just Bluetooth to it with my phone and have a party. Maybe I want to run an aux cord from my computer right into it. Um, you know, in that case, the stage pass is a better system. And there's a reason why, you know, I sold my DBR 10s, bought DXR 10s. Um, if you're looking for standalone 10s, I would say spend a little extra and get the DXR 10s if you can possibly afford it, because I think they do sound better. I still have them. I still like them. I think, I think the quality of the compression driver is a, just a noticeable improvement. Um, so I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of the, of the DXR 10s over the DBR 10s. Um, but the stage pass, I like it. I own three of them now. And I have plans to buy a fourth because it's it's probably the number one speaker system I rent out. And I rent it out so much because it's just easy to use. You know, my rental customer takes them out of the case, pops the mixer off, two quarter inch cords, one power into the wall, and they're good to go. Um, you know, plug in mics if they rented mics, plug in their laptop. If they want to Bluetooth a phone to it, they can. It's just, it's it's super easy for the rental customer. Um, but there's also downsides to it. You know, if you want to use a subwoofer with the stage pass, uh, the stage pass automatically crosses itself over at, I think, 120, which for me is a little high. I like to be 100 or less with a 10-inch speaker, probably 100. Um, I'm not a big fan of the 120 hertz crossover because I feel like that's where you kind of get the boomy basing, bass sound out of, a, out of a sub, and I'm not a fan of boomy bass. I like the more tight, low-end bass so um even though it crosses over at 120 sometimes i'll still set the crossover on the sub at um 100 just because you know crossovers aren't you know where then they're supposed to just meet and butt up you know they're they're more like that so i figure well you know if this is starting to trail off at 120 and this is starting to trail off at 100 there's a little dip where the, I feel like that boomy bass is, and it kind of helps just contour the sound the way I want it if I set the sub at 100 and the stage pass is crossing over at 120. Um, just my personal preference with it, but not saying that that's right or anything. Um, but, you know, if you're, so if you're using the DBR10s, it's a little bit more conducive if you if you have a mixer you're plugging into it or if you had a DJ controller you're plugging into it the stage pass is a little bit more conducive because it's got a real like a mixer that comes with it and that can be handy and it cannot be handy all at the same time um, you know if if you're plugging your DJ controller into DBR tens you could use hundred foot XLRs if you want and really stretch your speakers out um, with the stage pass. I don't like the quarter inch cords that come with it. I'll, I'll throw a link down in the in the uh, comment section of this video of the cords that I buy. I actually buy some nice Audio Technica quarter inch speaker cords. I buy the 25 foot, which is what I normally keep in the Stage Pass bag. But then I also have a pair of the 50 foot ones for times where I'm doing like a, a wedding ceremony and I've got the mixer over here, but I need to run a cord behind to put a speaker over here because you know, you don't want the mixer right where the bride and groom are standing and then split out to the sides. You want to have the mixer over here in a longer cord. And sometimes I feel like I could use a 75 or 100 foot cord, but I've always kind of been able to make the um, the 50 foot cord work. So I probably won't buy one that super long. Because with quarter inch, you do also run into, um, they, they actually come with the little crappy quarter inch cords that come with the stage pass. They actually also come with a little ferrite magnet 
that you're supposed to loop it through and I think that's supposed to help with interference because you know keep in mind with a uh, an XLR don't quote me on this but uh, it sends like two versions of the signal or something and then at the one end it inverts them or something and knocks out all the interference well with a quarter inch cord it doesn't do that because there's only two two conductors so you can potentially get interference especially if you you know run your quarter inch cord over electrical cords or something um there's not that uh i'm probably describing that really bad when it comes to an xlr cord but they're they're just they're designed to eliminate the interference that you would get with a standard quarter inch cord and you know on the plus side if you need longer ones xlrs just click together so i know this probably isn't a whole lot of help to you but just just to summarize here i think the stage pass sounds a little bit better not a whole lot but a little bit better um i don't think the sound quality improvement from the stage pass is enough to warrant like oh don't get the dbr if if the dbrs and having individually powered speakers would work better for you than having passive speakers with a powered mixer get the dbrs because you'll be happier with that setup in the long run even though it might not quite sound as good um but they're, they're close enough to where it really doesn't matter but if you have the extra cash dxr tens you know that's what i'm using right now um i don't use them regularly but i would have no issue using my dxr tens and just cranking them loud i think they sound good um I mean, heck, I would probably put a DXR10 over one of my 18-inch subs, and I think it would sound good with it. Um, maybe a little extreme sounding there, but they just, it's a good sounding top. Um, I plan on using my, my DXR10s for corporate events. You know, if I was doing a corporate event with 300 people in the audience, I'd have no problem using two DXR10s. DBR10s? I think at a corporate event with 300 people, I think you'd start pushing it to a point where the sound quality wouldn't be quite as good. The DXRs can just handle it a little bit better. Um, but at that same token, I probably wouldn't use the stage pass at a corporate event with 300 people either. But a wedding ceremony with 100, 150 people, yeah, you could do both of them. Um, the DBR10s are going to be good for 50 people. DBR10s are probably going to be good for you could probably get loud enough to do a hundred people, but you're not going to have the bass. You know, that's, that's kind of the issue with, with both systems. Um, I tell people that rent my stage pass, you know, it's good full range sound for up to maybe a hundred people. But if you're going to start pushing above a hundred, rent a sub to help augment the sound, take a little pressure out of the tops, give you a little bit fuller sound. Um, yeah. So not, not a whole lot of help there. I wish I could be more help, but they're just very similar. Um, sound edge slightly to the stage pass, but think about how you plan on using it um, to really make the determining factor. And um, yeah, I mean, throw down in the comments section if you got any, any other questions. I probably just babbled myself into a giant circle. Sorry about that. But, uh, you know, that's what I got for you. It's, uh, they're pretty comparable with a slight edge to the stage pass and just so many more inputs and stuff. Um, but also you don't get the redundancy and that is one thing I do like about powered speakers is say you're out doing a gig, one dies on you, say the amp blows up, pops a fuse, does something funky. You've still got the other one to go on with the stage pass. You've just got one powered amp. I've never had a problem with them. Yamaha stuff's pretty solid. But if that one amp goes down, your whole system's down. So that's also something to take into account. Um, but think about the events you're going to be using it for. Um, and if you have any, any other questions, throw it down in the comments section. Till next time, have a good day.